Hey guys, Pondo Chicken once again. So today's gonna be another video. It's gonna be an explanation video, kind of a little tour of my gym bag. Um, as you all know, I work out in my garage gym, so I don't necessarily go out to a uh, global gym, a 24 hour fitness, LA fitness, or anything like that. So uh, basically, what I'm gonna show you is what I use um, for accessories every day. Um, things like my belts, my, uh, my wraps, um, my shoes, uh, little things like that, little knickknacks. I'm gonna explain what I think, um, which ones are the best, which ones to skip, which, what my uh, reviews are and what their uses are for. So um, if you have any questions, please do leave uh, them in the comment section below. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, um, which tells me that I'm doing something right and I should do it more often. And also, uh, please do share and help my, uh, my little channel, my small little channel grow here on YouTube land. So enjoy and um, I'll see you guys. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, so um, the first thing I really want to talk about uh, moving forward is um, I believe the most important part of your gym bag. It's the most important piece of training equipment that you can buy, although it isn't 100% necessary. There's a lot of people that train without belts. Um, belts are there to protect you. Belts are there to prolong your training career. Uh, basically, uh, also, they also help you add more weights to your bench squat, dead cleans, things like that. Um, the first belt that I've ever purchased and I still uh, do have is this Altus belt, as you can see right here. It's about five inches um, thick. Uh, it's padded on the inside and it's a dual prong. Um, it worked well in the beginning when I was when I was doing my bodybuilding, uh, but right now when it, the weights I'm hitting, um, things like that, this belt doesn't really provide me enough support. And uh, if I had the option, I wouldn't buy it again. Um, the fact is that the padding right here doesn't really, uh, it provides a little bit of comfort, but it takes away from the support it gives you. And also the dual prong nature of the belt makes it really, really hard to, um, actually it's not really that hard, but it's kind of a nuisance to, you know, to buckle it in. So this was a good belt, a good starter belt, good belt if you're there for just general um, fitness and weightlifting, not necessarily the number one thing I use. Uh, I don't really use this anymore, so it's probably around $20 at Sports Authority. Another belt that I purchased, um, this, there's this two inch uh, sputting belt. Um, this is an excellent belt, uh, although this is two inches, the male size is three inches. I actually purchased the women's size. Um, initially I bought this for, um, uh, for weightlifting, but I kind of grew out of it, so I, think I give this to my girlfriend. Anyways, I wanted to talk about the quality. This thing is excellent. This quality is the same um, uh, things that Spud Inc. uses for everything that they, um, in, their, in their strap lineup. Uh, I believe the, uh, this thing is built uh, for the apocalypse, it could stand up to 10,000 pound test nylon. The Velcro is industrial grade. A lot of the the, uh, the nylon type belts that you see out there, like Harbinger, eventually do wear out. But from my understanding, this thing is a lot more durable, and I think it'll last a lot longer. The support that this provides is great. Um, right as of right now, my girlfriend uses this belt. Um, this is the woman's belt, um, but I do recommend the men's belt for deadlifting, for general weightlifting, things like that, snatches and cleans. So. Highly recommended. I think it's about fifty dollars uh, on Elite FTS and Sorenex. I mean, not Sorenex, Elite FTS and Rogue, uh, and also South Carolina Barbell sells it. Uh, the third belt I wanted to talk about right here. This is the five-inch um, Rogue nylon belt. Totally just bought this one maybe a week or two ago. I'm already in love with this belt. It's very, very comfortable and provides a good amount of support. Um, as you can see right here, it's it's thin. It's made out of nylon. Um, it's not as, I don't think it's as supportive as the, uh, the, the spud ink material, uh, as, as you see, it's, th it's thinner, but it's just as comfortable and it provides you a great deal of, um, mobility. It doesn't hinder you in any way. Um, it is a five inch belt, so it isn't, um, you know, legal for competition. Most competitions are required four inch belts, but this belt, as you can see right here, um, you know, it's $20. Uh, we've got a metal buckle, very, very comfortable. Uh, it's three it's three items shipped free from Rogue, so, you know, basically $22. They do sell a four-inch version, which can be used for competition. I do recommend it. I've only had this for a few weeks. Uh, the Velcro looks pretty, pretty tough. It looks a lot better than the Harbinger version that I had, but we'll see how long this will last. But for $20, you really can't lose. I highly do recommend this belt. It's very comfortable provides a great amount of support without hindering your mobility. It's great for Olympic weightlifting. I use it, use it mostly for. Third belt, I mean the fourth belt I have here, 
This is the uh, Elite FTS um, economy belt. Um, right now they have it on sale for, for 30 bucks on the website. Um, I haven't broken it in yet, but from what I can tell, it's a high quality belt. Every little piece about it is very quality made. I like the jingle of the buckle. I like this part right here. This thing is very, very thick. Um, hopefully, I believe it's a, it's a leather, a pleather slash plastic material. It's, you know, I've had it for about a month now. I use it for deadlifts. I use it for overhead presses. It's, um, it provides a good deal of um, support. It's a 10 millimeter belt. Uh, but in my opinion, it, the support provided by this belt, at least for me, doesn't compare next to the, the next belt coming up in the lineup, which is the Inzer Lever Belt. Oops. Anyways, so the Inzer Lever Belt, this one is um, 13 millimeters thick. This one is about $100. Um, and this one comes with this awesome little lever here. If, uh, so basically, you, you strap it on around your waist, put it onto the, uh, the holes affixed right here, and then you just latch it on. And once you're done with the lift, you will unlatch. It's, it's really, really simple, really, really easy to use. Um, the only thing wrong with this belt is oftentimes my uh, waist size changes, you know, like if, depending on how big of a breakfast I ate, depending if I didn't eat lunch yet, things like that. So um, it's kind of a, a nuisance when you always have to readjust with a with a quarter. I use a quarter, you could use a screwdriver, but it doesn't really take too long. It probably takes like two minutes. So it doesn't, it's a, it's a little bit of a nuisance, but it doesn't really bother me too much. The support of this belt is amazing. Um, you can get, you can crank this down ultra tight, but I honestly don't recommend you crank it down as tight as you can because that really limits your ability to brace your core and breathe um, in the lift. It's a 13 millimeter belt. Um, I think this is the highest it gets up into competition uh, approved in terms of um, you know power lifting. Um, this isn't really good for weightlifting. This isn't really good for bodybuilding type movements. Um, you know bicep curls, things like that. I'm sure it'll support it, but it's a little too much. It's overkill, in my opinion. It took me about two, three weeks to break in. Uh, the first two weeks, it was cringing. It was cutting into my sides, but now you know this thing is it's rock solid. It definitely supports greatly and. Um, I love it. It was probably one of the best investments I have in terms of accessories. Another item I purchased, another two items actually. So this is the uh, Elite FTS P2 Dip Belt. I actually don't use it too often, but I can tell you that it looks pretty sweet. The material is great. It's a, uh, it's leather. Um, it comes with this, it comes with this nice little chain link right here. You just add it on, put some weight on. So. You know, I got it for sale. Leo at the office has a good sale. I can see the handiwork is top notch. Well done. Well done, Elite. Um, the last uh, belt, it's not really a belt. What it is, is it's a reverse hyper strap. As you can see, it's, uh, it attaches to the leg of the reverse hyper. So um, basically, you, you, you attach it here, and this is where your ankles go. I also use this for belt squats. Um, this came free with a reverse hyper. But it works really well with belt squats. You, you strap a weight on here with, with a chain link and a carabiner. You can get a pin, um, pin weight attachment uh, post and you can basically do belt squats with it. You could strap a kettlebell to this. You could strap some, strap some weights to this. This is a pretty top notch. Everything from Spud Inc. is highly recommended and top notch. Anyways, those are my belts. Let's move along uh, into my duffel bag, um, which will be up next. All right, guys. So uh, the next up is my gym bag, where I'm top of my reverse hyper, which makes also for a good table showcasing your equipment. And back there is my my bars. So if you uh, you see it there, it's actually pretty nice. Anyways, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this uh, awesome piece of equipment. This is called the rep boards. Um, I'll put a link um, for this also. Uh, right here. Anyways, um, it gives you an opportunity to train by yourself. It works with a strap. Basically, you strap it around here, uh, Velcro wise, and this thing just sticks onto it. And you're able to do board presses um, by yourself alone in your lonesome. Since I work in a garage gym, it's really, really um, awesome. It's convenient for me, and I love being able to do uh, board presses because it really increases the volume that I can add into each and every bench press workout, along with the slick shot. So it's a great piece of equipment. It wasn't really that expensive, very lightweight, very portable. It's good stuff, very, very tough. Um, the next piece of equipment that I have is uh, my, my clips. Um, I have two types of clips. Um, I do also do have those uh, metal clips that comes with every bar, um, but, but these two are my favorite, bar none. The first one is the Rogue HG Collar. 
Uh, this came along with the, R the uh, Reverse Hyper. It was about $50 new, $40, maybe, maybe $40 new. You can get cheap ones from Amazon for $20. Bucks. Um, this one's really, really easy to use. It, it, it holds on tight to the bar. I know over time it will definitely uh, start to decrease uh, over wear and tear, but um, for right now this is probably my favorite piece of um, clips. It's really easy to use. So all you do is put the bar in, and then you clamp it down. And also to loosen the bar, you just open it like so. So really, really easy. Get a hold, get a hold of them. They come in a lot of different colors. There's blue and red. Um, a Rogue, I think, also sells a metal version. Uh, I, Thinking about buying it, it's like fifty dollars. Uh, I really want to make that investment, see if it, it's worth the money. Um, another piece that I got is from uh, Grizzly Fitness. Uh, I know other companies make it. Um, it's basically indestructible, you know. If it's uh, and it fits any bar, so it's it's kind of like a strap, metal buckle, and velcro. So you just strap it around the bar, and then you wrap it. It's kind of like a wrist wrap. For your bar, it's basically indestructible. It's made out of this rubber material on top of this nylon material with really, really durable Velcro. So if you have any specialty bars out there that's a like a weird size um, that doesn't necessarily fit this one, um, this will work great. It'll work for standard barbells. It'll work for um, things like that. It also makes for a good spacer if you want to put it inside the bar next to the sleeve before you put in the weights. It's it's indestructible. It's probably like twenty dollars on. Um, on Amazon, it was like uh, free shipping, so couldn't beat that. Uh, definitely a great buy. I'll put a link to it also. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about was some of the straps that I have. Um, as you can see, I'm going to whip out a few of them. They, they might not go in order, but I'll talk to them a little bit about each each one. So these are the straps that I use generally. Um, this is my Rogue uh, wrist straps. They're, I think, an inch and a half thick. They come in this awesome green color. They were really, really cheap. I don't think Rogue sells these ones anymore, but they sell, they sell black ones. Um, the thing about this is this is good. Um, it's a good strap. You know, it's definitely a good strap. I use it for dumbbell work, but it's not the most comfortable. The reason being is that it is thin. The material is thin. It's long enough to hold onto any bar any, with, with plenty of grip. But it's, um, you know, it's, it looks really, really nice. It's pretty sweet. I put it through its paces, so durability-wise, I think it's there. It's pretty good. Um, but definitely, it's, um, it's not the most comfortable. Uh, so I, I just use it for dumbbell rows and things like that for light work. Um, I use it I like it because of the color, you know, the neon green is pretty awesome. Um, but but my, what I usually use uh, in terms of deadlifting and uh, heavy, heavy dumbbell prop rows, things like that, is these um, chic, uh, these are, I forgot what they're called, but they're pretty sweet. So basically you just put your, your wrist right there, and you strap it tight, and it holds on. So this provides a little, uh, a good level of comfort um, when you're doing those really heavy deads and things like that, and it holds on really really well. I've had these for about four years now so it speaks volumes about its durability. It's really really nice. Um, very comfortable. Um, uh, I mean there are, I'm pretty sure it's not that hard to find online. It's called Chic. To be 100% honest with you I found these at the gym. Uh, LA Fitness and I've kept them ever since. You know somebody lost them. One man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Uh, two more depth types of straps that I use most often is these, these types of straps. These are quick release straps. Um, so it's kind of like a little triangle as you can see right here. What you do is you put it, your hand through and you wrap it around the bar. These are especially good if you're an Olympic weightlifter. If you're an Olympic weightlifter, oftentimes these types of straps aren't the best because the way these straps uh, latch onto the bar, they're not the best for quick release. You, when you do Olympic weightlifting, you want something that you could uh, eject, eject from quickly because of the fact that um, if, if you do a snatch with these types of straps, um, the ones where you wrap around the bar a few times. Um, sometimes you'd have to bail quickly and if you can't bail fast enough, the bar will drag you down. So the, uh, these are also very quick release. Um, this one is Spud Ink. Um, this one, this one is my favorite thus far. This is the Risto Sports. I got this one from Rogue. Um, it is leather. It's very, very comfortable. And it's a lot easier for me to set up with these ones versus these ones. So um, there's also, also, this one's a little bit thicker, it's a lot more bulky. Um, this one's a little bit thinner, it's easier. Um, it conforms to your hands 
and it's a lot easier for me to set up. Also, it gives you the opportunity to uh, release. And I think these are feel a lot more comfortable on my wrist. I don't know why, it's just probably the length. I highly recommend this one over, over the Spudding version. Um, those are the only two I've had experience with. There's a lot of other brands out there, like Iron Mine has one. I know uh, Rogue has a nylon version, so be, be sure to compare those and check out reviews. And between these two, I definitely would recommend this one just because of the more comfortable padding that they offer on the inside. All right, guys, so let's move it along. I'll always get to have a peanut um, for thoracic mobility. Be sure to YouTube peanut thoracic mobility. I think Kelly Strain has a video. Just two baseballs duct taped together. You basically lay on it on your upper back and you just do some spinal thoracic spinal mobility. Um, I have some knee wraps. These are the basic uh, Elite FTS version. I don't really have too much experience with knee wraps. I train with it probably once or twice a month. Um, just when I'm, I'm just going into new territory in terms of weight for the squat. So it really, really, um, really, really assists me and gets my confidence up. Um, these are about two meters long. They're the red version. I got them for 20 bucks, Elite FTS sale, uh, free shipping. Very, very comfortable, easy to apply. Um, so these are my favorites so far. I haven't really tried any of the other ones that have uh, rubber, uh, super, super grippy, very, very dense, a lot of pressure. These are just the average versions, but they provide a good amount of support. In, honest, in all honesty, um, uh, these do add weight to your squat. Um, I, I think in a way that it makes you a lot more confident um, in, with going with the weight just because they do provide a great deal of support to your knees. Me, uh, I'm 28 years old. Um, I don't have the youngest knees out there. Definitely, you know, I'm not the youngest lifter out there. My knees have been put through its paces, have gone a lot of, uh, a lot of squat sessions. You really want to protect your knees. Um, so if you're, you're going into new territory, um, nothing wrong with slapping these on and uh, just, you know, training just, just also makes training a lot more fun. So nothing wrong with knee wraps. Give them a shot if you haven't. Uh, another thing that I purchased a long time ago is these fat grips. Um, definitely, I should be using these more often. You could put this to any size uh, uh, Olympic bar. Um, not, I don't think they fit in standard bars. Oh, they might. Um, you could also put them in pull-up bars. You could put them in dumbbells. So they increase the grip. I, I believe these are two inches. So it really, really does train your forearms a lot more. Also, um, what I've noticed when I used to use these back in the day is uh, when I'm bench pressing with them, the thicker surface for my wrists really alleviates the pain on the elbows. So if, um, this might be bro science, this might not be, but I notice that when I'm pressing a lot more, it alleviates the pressure of the elbows. So if you, those of you with a lot of elbow tendonitis like I do, uh, thinking about it, I do have a lot of elbow tendonitis and I might include this into my next uh, bench press workout. But also, um, you know, if, if you're gonna try something new, if you're gonna try these on, be sure to have a spotter, play it safe, because you might not, uh, be used to it and you could possibly lose your grip. So either get a spotter or use an adequate rack, an overkill rack like, like I have here in the garage. These, are, these aren't these are that expensive. I know there's a few different uh, brands out there that sell these now. Um, there's a thicker version. Um, they're cool. I really do like them, but I don't, I don't use them enough. Um, you know, maybe I should start including them in training, especially for like pull-ups, you know, this would really increase your forearm strength. And I definitely need a lot of forearm sets. Um, another thing that I use often is these guys right here. These are the Mobility Wad um, uh, Voodoo Bands, Floss Bands. Um, I use them for my elbows. I use them for my knees, especially my knees. These are great. Uh, oftentimes I have a lot of knee pain just like out of nowhere. Left and right, uh, medial, uh, upper, anterior. So I just basically, you, you, what, the way these work is you wrap it around your joint. Uh, you wrap it around a muscle group, and um, the compression. Uh, I'm not. I don't really know the the science behind it. Is you wrap it super tight, and then you go through a range of motion. Say I put it in my elbow, wrap it as tight as you can, and then I do a bunch of range of motion. What it does is basically it resets um, the. It, it takes away all the adhesions similar to how foam rolling is, you know, you basically break up all the adhesions of the muscle and you, you reset the motion and you, you allow, allow the, uh, the tendons and the bones and the muscles to move freely. So um, 
you know, for me, I, I don't even know the exact science of it. I just noticed that I feel a lot better. My range of motion is restored after using these, um, you know, like put it on my knees and do a set of 20 air squats or do a semi t uh, bar squats. It really does make a difference, I've noticed. There are also, I got these from Rogue, um, endorsed by Kelly Sturette herself, so check them out if you wouldn't mind. Um, I have a few wrist wraps. So I have these two and this one from bodybuilding.com and also a gold gym version. Uh, gold gym version, man this thing's tiny, it's probably like 12 inches long, really really thin material, tiny little velcro. It's good for barbell, for dumbbell curls maybe, you know it's not really the best out there. I got these for free, somebody left it in my gym. Um, this one is a bodybuilding version, it's a, it's a heavier duty version. The, obviously the material is thicker, the, uh, the the spandex in there is a lot thicker. It's also 12 inches. It provides a good amount of support. Uh, across the line, you'll see that all my uh, all my wrist wraps aren't very long. They're probably all about a foot long. Um, so I got these two at Amazon.com, two for 20. They're Nordic lifting. Uh, so they got a lot of good reviews. Uh, over time, you'll you'll notice that the, uh, the the this part right here, the it's stitched on improperly. It's really bad design. So you'll just tear that thing off because this is Velcro. This is all Velcro. You want it all to stretch. And then this part right here is sitting there and you, you really can't stretch it. It's just going to tear off eventually. So what you do is you just tear that off. And it, it looks like this. The end result product looks like this to where all, everything can stretch. And it's a lot better. Um, anyways, I'll put a link in the description on where that goes, where you can buy these. Um, the reason I get the 12 inch uh, wrist wraps, not like the, you know, the 2 meter wrist wraps that power lifter has, is the fact that I do Olympic weightlifting often. Um, so you, you want a little bit more wrist mobility, you can't have it like cast it on. Also the uh, wrist wraps that I have here uh, uh, were pretty much inexpensive, I wasn't going to spend $40, plus my bench isn't really, you know, world record range, I bench uh, maybe 315 pounds. So these provide plenty of support for me. I never really had issues with wrists. The most my wrist would get uh, tweaked on would be when I do low bar squatting just because a lot, quite a bit of the weight is on your wrist as well. So these are really, really helpful. Basically, those are the four wrist wraps that I have in my position. Probably should get the gangster wraps or something like that in the near future just to see what all that fuss is about. This is really good. This is the hip circle. Put it around your thighs. Put it around your knees, duck walk, side to side walk. It's a really good way to warm up your 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 uh, your hips uh, before a workout. I really do recommend this. This is awesome. Um, I, I there I believe uh, Mark Bell does sell another version of this. Uh, it's where it's a red version. It's a tougher version. Um, so this one I'm kind of wearing it out already. Um, so I'll give that a shot. But definitely very very cool. So just put it around your knees put some weight on your back and do some squats, you're, you'll notice that you're, you're really opening up those hips. Uh, prevents injuries, things like that. I got these cuffs from Mark Bell. Really, I got this one for my elbows, really good for elbow tendonitis, provides a good amount of compression. Um, it's tight, but not too tight. Uh, but you, you do have to kind of take it off sometimes, or otherwise you'll lose, um, you lose blood flow to your muscles. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, I haven't used it in a while. Just because I upgraded into wearing um, neoprene sleeves for my uh, my elbows and my knees and things like that, so these are like ten dollars a piece. You can get them from Rogue, Amazon. Um, always need a lot of chalk. I got chalk in the bucket, so I still have this chalk uh, buffalo ball here, bison chalk ball. It's basically a sock with a bunch of chalk in it. So you know it's good if you're going to go to a gym that doesn't allow chalk. You can put it in your bag and just let it put it in inside your bag so you don't make too much of a mess. It's pretty awesome. Um, here we go. A few things that I wanted to talk about is my sleeves. I got the Reband. This is I believe the 7084. This is the upgraded version of their 7051. I hope, I'm really hoping I'm saying those numbers properly. Uh, so I have these ones. These ones I generally, as you can see, it's a little, it's, it's smaller profile than these guys right here. Uh, I made a video review comparing these two not too long ago. I'll put a, post a link on it here as well. Um, I love the rebounds for Olympic weightlifting. These don't really restrict your range of motion. Um, they provide a really good amount of support and warmth. Um, so I really like to use this for Olympic weightlifting. Things like wads. Um, I noticed that the difference between the 7084 versus the 7051 is these stay on my knees a lot better. They don't roll down as much. 
Um, and they're really, really easy to put on. And then we got these guys, these are the SBDs. Every power lifter in the world uses these almost exclusively for squats. Um, things like, you know, basically squats. These are these are as thick as these, but these somehow do provide a lot greater compression on my knees. Um, and it, it, it just feels a lot more uh, compression and a lot more support and a lot more warmth. Uh, $90 for these guys, but I wouldn't use these for cleans. I wouldn't use these for Olympic weightlifting. They're too much constricting in that aspect. These are good for static motion, um, things like squats, uh, maybe deadlift, you know, things like that. Um, definitely you could do a lot more different workout. I mean, you could, you could use these for squats. These wouldn't really, these are really aren't bad. These are excellent for squats. I would, I would squat these if, if I didn't have these. To be honest, if I had the option between the two, I would buy the rebounds just because of the um, variety of exercises you could do with them. Um, but both of them are excellent choices if you have the funds, if you have the means of getting both. And also, my girlfriend uh, has these, these guys right here. These are also rebounds. These are extra small. Um, but what I, I, you know, I use them when she's not using them. I use them for my elbows. So I have really bad elbow tendonitis. And I notice when I do have these on, my elbows get really warm. And it's, it's a thing of the past. I don't really have any elbow pain before. I don't have any elbow pain during or after. So if you have uh, an issue with that, you know, don't fuss around with um, all these other things. Just get some knee sleeves, um, put them, or they actually sell elbow sleeves. You could get elbow sleeves and just put them on your elbows and they, they feel great. They're actually great. So the last and final thing I wanted to talk about is my shoes. All right guys, so I wanted to talk about my shoes uh, next. Uh, final, final subject, guys, I promise. This is turning out to be a long video, I think. So uh, let's get to it. Um, the first uh, shoe that I have here, these are Reebok Nano 4s. Um, they run a little bit smaller than the original, than the Nano 3s. I really love these shoes for uh, CrossFit like workouts. Basically anything that doesn't, you know, uh, involve me just doing one lift for a while. Um, kind of confusing there, but I use these for running. I use these for box jumps. I use these for uh, if I switch between uh, squats and cleans. Um, bench things like that. You could use this for any 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 workout. You could use these. These are good for uh, everything. Very very comfortable. Very durable. I still have a pair of Nano threes that I've been wearing for work uh, for the last two years, and they're holding up great. These are the Nano fours, so we'll see how these do. But these are very very comfortable. I like the style. Oh, can you get in focus there? Um, but they're really really cool. Very 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 uh, nice, uh, ergonomic, and I love the flat heels and really grippy. Um, the next pair of shoes that I have here is, um, these are my uh, Olympic weightlifting shoes. These are the Addy Powers um, in white, as you can see right here. I love these shoes. The reason you want to wear Olympic weightlifting shoes is basically the heel. The heel is raised, um, giving you better ankle stability, giving you position, better position to squat and catch the, uh, the weight. And basically it helps you squat. Um, picture being on a hill facing down the hill and, and squatting down. And in that aspect, you're able to squat a lot easier just because it helps your, the angle helps your ankles um, and your knees and your hips and your whole body basically uh, squat a lot easier. For those of you with uh, ankle issues or mobility issues, these will help. Also, I'm really happy about these. I'm proud of these just because I have Dimitri Klokov's signature here. He did sign my Adi Powers. You know how many other uh, Adi Powers out there have uh, Dimitri Klokov's signature. Really, really cool. Another pair of shoes I have is actually I have two pairs, uh, three pairs. One is on my foot. Um, this is the uh, Mark Bell uh, power shoe. So you got the original. I love this. This is one of my favorite shoes just because it looks so badass. It looks like Chuck's. Um, really, really stable. It comes with these little suction cups right here. My shoes are really dirty. Um, and on the side, they're uh, very, very supportive. Uh, the reason these shoes are specifically for powerlifting is the fact that they are rock solid. They're really, really tough. Um, they provide an excellent base and they're flat. Uh, plus, I think they look really sweet. So I have the black ones on my feet right now. I let, as you can see, um, you got the gray and orange. And these ones I wear for functions and just to hang out. These are really cool. So those are my shoes. Uh, anyways, let me show you this one real quick. This is the black version. Like the black one goes with almost any outfit. Um, they're like Chuck Taylors, and they don't cost much more than Chuck Taylors. 
but they are a lot more durable than Chuck Taylors, especially if you use them for power lifting. So anyways guys, those, that's my equipment. That's what I use on a daily basis. Um, I'll put a link uh, definitely in the description and on the film on where you can get said items. Um, they're all, all great. Um, definitely read reviews. Look for the best prices out there. Anyways, be, be sure to like this video if you thought my content was okay. Um, definitely gives me an idea of what videos to make more of. Um, leave in the comment section below if you have any recommendations for me um, in terms of items or content or any requests. And uh, if you frequent my channel, please do subscribe. I'm going to have a lot more good content out there for you guys to watch. And uh, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.